<clears throat> two, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hi guys, thanks for downloading. So today's episode, we spoke with former Bellator, Strike Force, and UFC fighter Jay Haron. An amazing chat and an amazing insight into some of the crazy world of MMA during his active years. Um, Jay's also starring in the Equalizer too. It's out this weekend and here in the UK. Uh, Denzel Washington at the helm there. I've got some cool uh, boxing stories about Denzel. Jay closes up on as well. I'm, I'm sure you'll enjoy. We're just a few weeks away from episode 100 on the podcast, so I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone here. Uh, everyone who continues to subscribe, like us, tune in, all the rest, fan questions, we really appreciate you guys. Episode 100, we're going to be doing a live Q&A with all the fans, um, and there's a chance to win some prizes, courtesy of our friends at bscale.co.uk, it's going to be awesome. So before we get to the chat, let me first acknowledge the sponsors who make my life a heck of a lot easier, and starting with A1 Fight Gear. A1 Fight Gear use the latest cutting-edge boxing gloves for professional amateur fighters, gym enthusiasts, and kickboxers, so local and national gyms in the UK do. Do yourselves a favour, go check out a1fightgear.com. And if you want to get back into shape, continue to stay in shape, keep the fat trimmed off, so to speak, go to bscare.co.uk, use the coupon code MARTIALARTSCHAT and you can save 15% off your purchases. You've got core sliders, they've got straps and barbell pads, all sorts of strength and conditioning programs at different levels to suit your needs. So beast your goals this summer with bscare.co.uk. And finally, we're also sponsored by MMATakeover.com. For the real MMA rankings, go to MMATakeover.com or visit them on Facebook and subscribe on Twitter. Minus flat on the canvas. We are ready to rock and roll. Second round of action. There is a cut on Minus. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. My man B Hop got knocked out, dropped out the ring last night. <laughs> <laughs> I need a little judo baby. I need me a little judo baby. And uh, let's, let's do it, Ron. Let's, let's give me a. <laughs> See you with Bill. We actually got a face for video. That's got a face for video. That's nice. Martial Arts Chat. Hello, welcome to the Martial Arts Chat Podcast. I'm pleased to say we are joined at this time by former UFC Strike Force, WEC, Martial Arts, Bellator MMA fighter, Jay the Thoroughbred Huron. Jay, how are you? IFL too. IFL, (laughs) of course. Yeah, man, yeah. It was a big old stint for you in IFL as well, man. We'll we'll go get to that space. Won Won my world title with them. Hell yeah, man. Pleasure to have you on. If actually, first Thanks time I think I saw you compete, uh, it was actually, oh, forgive me, man, it was well into your MMA career. It was the the, the KO Jason High. Uh, oh, man, yeah. Back cool. in the day. Yeah, that was doing. That was a, I had a nice payday and it was, uh, it was a cool story. Uh, Mike Tyson was in the house for that because he's right. a big uh, Fedor Emelianenko fan. And I was supposed to fight earlier in the night, but they, for a time reason, they pushed my fight to after a million eight gold fight which i was the real main event <laughs> no nah, i'm kidding but they pushed my fight till then and um mike was still in the house and he saw my fight and um uh like a week later i saw him in um back in vegas and he was like hey man i saw you fight great job so that was a pretty that was a pretty cool highlight of my career <laughs> that tops it off and you're from new york as well right i mean have yeah an born and raised definitely a tyson fan growing yeah, up man. and um yeah incredible what an Never thought he watched me fight. That, that's that's amazing, and and the, the, they were all out as well, man. That that card was packed. Like I, I probably actually it was the first card I watched that wasn't UFC. I mean, there was like who did you have? Fedor, Olovsky, uh, yeah. Josh Barnett. I want to say was on that card as well. And Josh Barnett, uh, Vitor Belfort. Vitor, that's uh, right. Fuck, man. Man, I mean, they put a lot of money into it too, production yeah. wise. Um, the Wayans was cool. Um, um, they had that band singing Mother, you know, that's rock, right. rock song, remember that? That's that was right. pretty intense. <laughs> um, it was it was awesome. Classic night, Happy man. to be a part of that. Definitely. You were king of the moon yeah. that sad, night. Sad they only had uh, two, three shows, but, you know, it's cool to be on one of them. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. You can definitely say that. Let's start with uh, with your life, and we'll, we'll start with, with Young Jay, because um, wrestling was your passion. Yeah. Um, and and a blossoming career, early days. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I watched some of your memories from 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 that. Yeah, time, Young right? Jay was a um, a skinny skinny punk kid that got picked on. I really didn't have any uh, older brothers or anybody to help me out with my altercation. So that's what drove me into. Uh, actually, I started boxing at first. Oh, you know, right. Just a way to just a way to be able to protect myself. Huh. And this is like right before going into a high school. I went to a little pretty tough high school where 
you know, a lot of fights, a lot of kids get picked on, a lot of jumpings and all that. They take your stuff, you know. And I mean, it wasn't the worst, but yeah, it wasn't the best. So, yeah. um, I had to learn. You know, I, I took it upon myself to learn a, a you know, a type of 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 more well, boxing at first, just to be able to protect myself, mm-hmm. which. Um, I'm starting high school, so the boxing gym was too far for me to get to at the time. It was uh, I didn't have a car. I was still a young kid, 13 years old. And I found out they had wrestling at my high school, which I was like, I'm joining that. You know, if anything, I could be able to slam somebody or <laughs> be able to grapple somebody to get them off of me or just to, you know, protect myself. And I joined wrestling. And, man, it was just it was incredible for me because I, you know, first, yeah. I, it turned me into a man. It was like, okay, nobody's messing with me anymore. Yeah. But I also fell in love with the competition of it and learning. You know, it was just like so many moves, and you know, I just wanted to learn and soak it up. As an ignorant guy from the UK, like obviously we don't have a wrestling program or anything like that in schools. Is it is that all across the board in the states, or is it does it vary state to state? So like you're you're a New York guy. Is wrestling yeah. a, a big thing in New York as well as it's pretty the big in the states? Yeah. I mean, I mean, even for college, you know, NCAA's, right. it's pretty big, and then and then um, you know, I I don't know if it dies down once you finish college. Well, now. It's great because now you could think about an MMA career, but but you know back in the day it was oh, like, yeah. what do I do with my wrestling after high school? <laughs> it's the it's the college, and then what do you do after college? The Olympics, which mm. which really isn't that much money, but uh, now you know the kids could look forward to an MMA career. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty uh uh, you know a lot of high schools have it. You know, um, mm-hmm. you know I'd say. Uh, four out of three out of five probably have it so it's pretty big and did you have aspirations obviously boxing you want you want to protect yourself you want to learn how to fight and look after yourself and wrestling that was the idea yeah. as well but once you got I, in the swing of things was it oh i want to be a part of this or how did you choose? yeah yeah that's that's when it all changed i yeah. mean for boxing it was just all right let me learn how to fight yeah that was it i didn't even want to compete or anything i just wanted to learn how mm-hmm. to punch and protect myself and just to gain more courage. I was a kid that used to run, you know? Right. And I was mad at my, I remember being mad at myself. Like, man, I got to stop running and just turn around and, and sock one of these kids <laughs> yeah. just to let people know, stop messing with me. And yeah. I was so, I, I would just remember so being so mad at myself. Like, why do I always run? Why do I always run? So, mm-hmm. so it was, it was good for me because yeah. when I joined wrestling, I just was in there every day, every day. And it just, click something clicked in me in my mind and in me like that's it i'm i i, ch- I changed it it was no more running it was like okay mm-hmm. you know now i'm taking care of myself you know nobody's gonna punk me mm-hmm. and um and then of course doing it and doing it, i just learned to love the competition i just then it became you know a passion of mine to learn and get better and competing you know just trying to win so i turned everything all that you know, scaredness in me, and I turned it into a passion, and yeah, and it drove my my competitive competitiveness. Yeah, so it almost sounds like your your fear is becoming a fuel at this point. I guess, yeah, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like so I always tell kids now, like you know, well, parents or definitely put your kids in sports. It, you know, it could definitely teach them. Um, um, you know teach them a lot about themselves mm-hmm. and, and turn them into a man absolutely or a woman <laughs> yeah yeah it, it, it helps you grow and it helps you develop for sure like martial arts they say it's a good outlet for whatever life throws at you right and it's it's kind of what we're all about in this podcast martial arts chat but i'm a school teacher as a day job as well and and i, and I teach oh. a wee bit of martial arts and and and, and i'm actually a firm believer that I, th- I think martial arts should be taught in schools but maybe that's another story for another, another day but i was just curious mate because you were mentioning i agree <laughs> especially nowadays <laughs> you, you know these the schools in the states they need to teach something man yeah, it was, wow. but, but, but like like we were talking about there with the wrestling program. I mean, is there is, surely there's an avenue for because wrestling is a martial art. Surely there should be avenues for for other ones, right? But I was just curious, growing up, teachers and things like that. Is there any is anyone's teaching or, or coaches? Anyone give you any early words of wisdom that kind of thing in your life? Oh that yeah, my true today. My yeah, of course. My coaches in high school, Terry Hayes and um, uh, Russ Sullen. They're the reasons why. I made it through high school because of wrestling, 
because if you didn't have a certain grade average, you couldn't be on the team. You right. couldn't represent the school. So that's what happened to me. I, I fell in love with the sport, and then all I, I wasn't good in school. You know, I'm not going to BS anybody. I was not good in school. My focus wasn't there. But when I knew I had to get my grades up to be a part of the team, mm-hmm. I would do anything I, I had to do mm-hmm. because that's how much I, I wanted to compete. Mm-hmm. And the coaches stayed on me through high school on that. You know, they were really, uh, you know, I, I, in in uh, my senior year, going into my senior year, I, I didn't want to even wrestle anymore. I just, you know, I started, you know, hit puberty, started looking at girls and yeah, doing other stuff. Goes, and <laughs> who wants to be on a mat wrestling? And, um, <laughs> you know what I mean? With sweaty guys. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was, I was like, what am I doing? You know, and, um, you know, my coaches stayed on me. They were on me. They're like, Jimmy, you know, they called me Jimmy in high school. <laughs> um, they're like, Jimmy, man, you got to, you know, this is how you, your way out. You're going to graduate. You, you can get a scholarship to college. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, I wasn't even really thinking about college, but. They stayed on me, thankfully, and, um, you know, I I definitely owe a lot to them. And is that what ended up happening? You went into a a college wrestling program then? Is that how things went down? Absolutely. I went into a college wrestling program, and um, they uh, wanted me out of to get out of my environment, which was New York. So I went Midwest, which which really, it was like a culture shock to me. So I ended up coming back half a semester in, back to New York, and then I did really well. I went to junior college in Nassau. And I took third the first year, third junior college nationals. And then the sec- the next year I won it. I took first in the nationals, oh, which amazing. the junior college nationals is very hard. It's all the guys like me mm-hmm. that were really good in high school that don't have any good grades, which is okay. a lot of guys. I okay. mean, you know, you put 60% of the guys that are really good, but they just don't have the grades to go D1 off the bat. Uh-huh. And um, that was me. I, so I had to go to uh, junior college, graduate, and I and I won the national. So there's a lot of great competition in there. And then I went D1. I went to Hofstra. And, um, you know, not not on the best track at that point. Um, got in a little, couple things. And um, uh, I was ranked third in the country my senior year wrestling. And, um, you know, I got popped for a weed test. I was messing around, knucklehead kid. And um, I didn't wrestle my senior year because of the school policy at the time. They said right. if you get popped, you can't, you can't compete that season. So this is my last year wrestling, man. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of two avenues. I kind of went down the left one because I'm like, see, now all that resentment came back to me. Like, what did I wrestle all these years yeah. for? You know, well, what was I gonna do anyway? I just, you know, I was a knucklehead. I'm like, ah, what, what could I have done anyway? MMA wasn't as big as it is now, and the Olympics, they didn't, they didn't pay much. I'm like you know mm-hmm. ah, the hell with this it's just sound like a, a lost kid at this point probably frustrated with the world right yeah how old yeah. are we talking so, I mean, so when you're in it was a Hofstra, Hofstra did you say sorry that was yeah after university so how, yeah. old, how old are you be talking at this point teenager what 16 or something 17 yeah no no I was uh, 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 eight, 17 18 right right, so, right. yeah college it was right. college. oh sorry 19, this is your college 20 mm-hmm. maybe even uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't even know man Dang, time flies so how does um, how does things develop from there? I mean, you obviously pick yourself up and enter the world of MMA, but this is a, yeah, this is so, a good time uh, frame a later. Mine, so, uh, a buddy of mine, Phil Baroni, for UFC, oh, and oh, yeah. all types of organization. <laughs> yeah, he's a, um, he was doing competing uh, on the side. He would be wrestling. We were from different high schools, but we were from the same area, so right. we ended up at the same college together. Mm-hmm. And he was uh, doing like MMA competitions and and boxing stuff and. He was kind of doing all types of different things while he was wrestling, and he would always bring the gloves in. And I would, I boxed a little bit back in the day, so I always thought I had some hands, which I didn't. <laughs> you know, I never really <laughs> focused on learn, learning. So uh, one thing led to another that period of time when I wasn't, um, when I got, you know, I didn't wrestle anymore, and I'm just trying to find myself. Mm-hmm. He asked me to come out and help him train for uh matt linlin fight i think it was on the second matt linlin fight and um i said sure um i went out to vegas and then that opened up my eyes to you know the whole world of mma you know Mm -hmm. i mean i got to the gym and tito ortiz was there training Mm -hmm. um i saw matt hughes carlos newton all these high level Uh guys and then i started like okay let me you know i started um picking up uh boxing stuff and just learning you know Mm -hmm. at first I was just learning. I didn't think I was going to compete. And then I just started getting better and better. I went back home, 
gym in New York. He brought me to Phil before we, he flew me out to help him train in Vegas, which was Belmore Kickboxing Academy. Right. And a great trainer there, Keith Tremble. He was another guy that was uh, definitely influential in my career. Just, you know, started from ground zero learning, you know, watched all the tapes. They had a back room in the back. I would mm -hmm. a couch and uh, hundreds of tapes, Muay Thai, <laughs> yeah. all types. I would just study, man. I'd just be in there all day studying, 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 come out and try something. I'd yeah. learn on the tape and it was fun. That's amazing, man. You're just sitting there being a sponge for all this and then... Sponge. You, yeah, That's man. Sponge, man. Sponge. Just man. absorbing all that knowledge, man. Yeah. 2003, so, obviously, we see you, you actually enter the world of MMA and you've got that boxing and wrestling. You've got that in your toolbox at this stage, as you said. But how did you enjoy early days? Because I imagine New York, that's ring of combat territory and all that. Is that, was that how you yeah, kind of started? Was yeah, that around was at the time, yeah? First, right. One of my first organizations I fought for wow. was ring of combat, Lou Neglio. He is yeah. actually a lot of the New York guys come out of that that yeah. are in the UFC now. I mean, Frankie Etta, Edgar. Uh, Weidman, uh, I'm sure. Was Weidman, it? Weidman, yeah. Uh, I mean, Matt, Sarah, everybody yeah. comes from that. But um, um, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's uh. Oh, sorry. What was the question? Just there? some of your memories of Ring of Combat. Your yeah, yeah. That yeah. was great. A great organization. You know, great promoter Lou. Um, again, his uh, a lot of great uh, uh New York East Coast guys come yeah. out of their Jersey. Eddie Alvarez came from there. I know him. You know. La Quinta, uh, Baroni, me, myself. I mean, the list goes on. Uh, Andre Harrison's right now competing. I mean, you know, the list goes on and on. Everybody on the East Coast has fought at one time or another for uh, that promotion. And how so did you feel? Cool. You're, so you're you're involved in the mix now. You're 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 throwing leather inside the cage, MMA. Um, yeah. You just living the dream <laughs> at that point. You're just like, this is the best thing ever, or what? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's kind of funny because the at first i'm just going there to, again it's a point in my life where um you know i wasn't really thinking about competing when i first uh uh came out to help him train it's mm -hmm. when i came back and i just you know started relieving some stress at the time that i was going through in my life and i just started wanting to train wanting to be an athlete again because it was a you know about two years since the hofstra thing and um, I, I really didn't train. I was just probably lifting some weights for a little bit of time just to, you know, want. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it felt good to get back in and move and sh and sweat and just, you know, now I have all these other um, arts to learn. So yeah. it was fun to pick up other things other than wrestling, you know, get back to boxing, now Muay Thai and, and, and then which which was really good we they had a guy that was competing at the gym in belmore which his name was uh joe diarcy he was like a black belt already uh jujitsu he, uh -huh. he was great and one of my best wrestling takedowns at the time was a high crotch mm -hmm. i could take anybody down with it but if you do a high crotch in mma or or grappling or jujitsu anything that you could use a a, a guillotine choke it puts your neck it exposes your neck right sure. to that choke yes. uh -huh. with that takedown so i'm just shooting this takedown <laughs> and he just choked me every time and I'm like, what the hell yeah so that was like early on but it was good yeah. for me because oh, it yeah. made me respect mm -hmm. it made me respect jujitsu and and really made me okay i gotta learn yeah i really need to learn this art it, it yeah. works i mean this is one of my greatest takedowns and and every time i shoot this guy just goes to his back and chokes my neck out yeah, <laughs> yeah. so i i took time and learned and that's what you know i just had the real full martial arts mind frame just open up my mind and learn different yeah. arts and you know to get great at some another art you might have to um the 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 thing you're really really good at you might have to bring that level down a little bit because everything un, might not work Oh yeah, that competition. So that's the mind frame I had, and and um yeah, I just started learning from there. I love hearing stories like that. I did Taekwondo for ten years. Uh, I'm a black belt under Master Law, and I remember when I went to my first Muay Thai class, and it was years after I stopped doing Taekwondo, and I, uh -huh. and I thought I'll be pretty good at this. I didn't go to the beginners yeah. class. I turned up late for the like the advanced class, and man, yeah. did I get my ass handed to me? <laughs> I didn't want to oh, go yeah. back. I was just like, and then I just kind of step back and suck it up, and just kind of what you were saying there, dude. It's like, right, okay, I need to respect this martial art, and most uh -huh. importantly, I need to go and learn this shit. But yeah, it's yeah. I love 
hearing stories like that, just people opening their minds to to uh, all, all, all facets of the game. Yeah. And I'm sure you excelled after that because your mind frame, you know, if you Absolutely. don't, if you have that closed mind frame, like, no, my art's the only one that works, yeah. then you're, you know, you're, you're limiting yourself. Absolutely. So being that you had that mind frame, I'm sure you excelled. Yeah. You know, that's how you got to be because <laughs> there's always a move that could counter this move that's better than that move. <laughs> and, you know, you just got to. <laughs> that's the beauty yes, of it as well, and there's always a there's always a counter to a counter. That's, what, that, that's yeah, with, especially with jujitsu, man. That's what I love about it. It's like uh, anyone anyone in this game can tap anyone. That's it's, it's the beauty of of that art for sure, man. But let, let's move on a wee bit about your MMA career. So, a uh, couple of fights in, you're in the UFC. You're fighting guy, some guy called George Saint Pierre, <laughs> is it? Or yeah. or something like that. Yeah, um, that was funny how that happened. Wow. That, that actually happened another time. I came out to help. Again, Phil train and, I, train, and I was in the transition of thinking about moving here just to get out of my environment again. And um, I'm sparring Phil down in the the UFC gym at the time, their their uh, their old uh, uh, headquarters, and um, they have a gym downstairs, one ring, just a real nice uh, private gym. And but Dana White has a camera, I guess, in the in the gym. Right. So me and Phil are sparring. He, you know, he's doing his camp there. And um, I guess uh, Dana was asking, like, who's that kid? You know, I guess, you know, to me, uh -huh. just looking at uh -huh. him, watching me train. And just so happens that uh, Mayhem Miller was scheduled to fight GSP, but something happened where that fight um, didn't go through. I don't remember if Mayhem got hurt or somebody, he got pulled. So Dana White offered the fight. He's like, yo, I like this kid. Yeah, I see how he moves. I mean, hey, looking back, I, I didn't even have the manager at the time. I was only had four fights. I was still green. Right. But, you know, hey, man, if an opportunity presents itself, I'm oh, going to yeah. take it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wasn't ready, but, you know, it's all good. I got in there, did my thing. Did you have any you idea, know? you know, what this Canadian guy was going to do? Yeah, that's another thing. The bad, the bad part about it is, is I trained with him, a few, I guess, a, a six to eight months before that. No you way. Know, in New York, that at Rodrigo Gracie's gym. Right. And I felt he was super strong. But we didn't spar. We just, we, we grappled and uh -huh. wrestled. And I took him down a few times. So me already in my mind from him, I'm like, I got this guy. <laughs> I can take him down at will. Right. You know, so, yeah. so it kind of like, you know, again, it goes back to not being exper as experienced as mentally even. Yes. You know, uh -huh. even, even I was very athletic, but even mentally, I was just thinking, you know, even how I went into the fight, I made myself not like the guy. I fought on emotions, which later in my career, I learned how to control my emotions to go in and fight and fight just being sharp and my clear mind rather than fighting on on emotions, which I fought that fight on. But not take nothing away from him. He's great. And, you know, he was very prepared and, and um, you know, uh, yeah, best man, better man that night. Good, good, good for you, man. Fair play. IFL is your home for the next few years. You amassed an amazing record there. I think it was like seven yeah. wins or something. And it was only one defeat. It was fantastic. That was, that was those, yeah. those got to be some fond memories for you, mate. Yeah, great, great, great uh, thing. I got, you know, I was on the team with Boss Root and was the head coach. It was awesome. Oh, with him. A lot of great memories with that. Uh, we represented LA, LA Anacondas. Uh -huh. um, as bass yeah, as I crazy just, as they say, is he really he's crazy? He's crazy, <laughs> absolutely. He's shit crazy, bat shit crazy. But I love him for it. Yeah, he's just as, as real as they come, and it's, the training is so intense. It was awesome. Yeah. He had a, like a a hill by the gym where we train. We would all go out to LA three, four weeks before the fight and right. go to camp there with God. the team. And he had a hill right by the gym, real high, steep hill. And we used to do sprints on it. I remember it all. I used to have shin splints after, but <laughs> super intense guy to train would be around just you know high level energy it was incredible great great trainer you know he had these drills that i still do to this day um um randy couture of course i trained with for years i'm a part of his team still as well but uh yeah it was great you know in ifl i got to mold like uh, my, my my mentality and and just my skin skills and and um you know just be a more complete fighter i thought at yeah. that at that time you know i just really got on my on the on the mental side and just you know not not stressing things and let let everything 
not affect me that's outside of the mm -hmm. outside of fighting and stuff you know and outside of my training just stay healthy and and let stuff fall into place kind of thing because i before that i would stress ah man you know I, i'm waiting for an opportunity and you know mm -hmm. just worrying about other stuff that didn't even you know really pertain to my life mm -hmm. so that's when i started you know just dialing in yeah, man, it sounds like you're probably happy, not just in your MMA, but you sound like the way you're talking about there, are you happy in your life at that point? Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was more, it was secure, I guess, as uh -huh. well, too, because, I mean, it, you know, again, living a fight of life, dude, is hard, I mean, I don't okay. care, especially when you're starting out, man, it's so fucking hard, I mean, you know, you're living from paycheck to paycheck, you're trying to get your name up there to get to the big show. You know, I mean, even when we went back then, too, we didn't, we didn't even have insurance, bro. I mean, it was crazy. You were rolling the dice when you went into train. I had guys training next to me, sparring, popping the ACL oh. and no insurance. It was incredible. Yeah. So you're on your toes back then. Yeah. It was, it was, it's crazy. But um, when IFL came around, we it was great because they had like a salary. They put you on salary every month. Mm -hmm. So I was getting like three, four grand a month. So that just you know takes the pressure off your shoulders a little oh, yeah. bit and then every time you fought you got your payday mm -hmm. so i mean you know you're kind of comfortable even mm -hmm. though it's not you know much but at that time it was great because it was like okay you know this is you know i'm finally starting to make money at this mm -hmm. i finally could let you know breathe and and um you know kind of relax and um you know we still didn't have the insurance if you get hurt in training it was still only if you competed and you got hurt. But, yeah. but, you know, at least you were able to go out and get some insurance. That's crazy, though, man. Like, one, just when you're saying, like, someone's uh, knee pop, like, yeah, one wrong turn yeah. and it's over, right? Yeah. That's <sighs> It happened. I was in training, bro. ACL, no insurance. Dude's crying over oh, there. Crying. man. Like, incredible. Fight business is nuts. Yeah, heavy duty stuff for sure, man. Thank God I only do jujitsu. I couldn't live that life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, jujitsu happens too, brother. Don't, don't man, that's true. Listen. That's true. I've got plenty of crunch <laughs> bones. What am I talking I've about? Seen guys, I've seen guys get hurt rolling too, man. I mean, hey, you know. It's bad news. It's, uh, it's definitely about, you know, training smart. And hopefully that doesn't happen. But it is a contact sport. It does happen. That's it, man. That's the price we pay. Hey, after obviously IFL, we see an inflection as we mentioned at the top of the show. But after then, it's it's off the strike force. Um, you get some solid victories. I remember watching you, Joe Riggs and Jesse Taylor. Um, yeah, and yeah, at the I time, made some really good. That's when my well, money. Was what up. I wanted to I see, mean, man, and and I need to bring up was that there was all set up for you and Diaz, and it, and it just didn't seem to happen. Yeah, yeah. What, that what, what you know, up? for some some reason it didn't happen. It would have been a great great fight at the time. Um. Um, I think he got popped on smoking weed or something. I don't oh, really sake. remember what exactly <laughs> happened, but uh, you know, it didn't happen, and it's all good. I mean, you know, he's a great fighter. Of course, I wanted to fight him. He has a you know badass name, and that dude always comes to fight. So at the time, you know, I wanted the best names and the best fights. I felt that I was ready. Yeah. Um, didn't happen. You know, it wasn't in the cards, and you know, I kept moving forward. Were you, you wanting to continue with Strike Force? Force ah, I'm saying, right. So the, the Diaz yeah. fight going south, was that enough for you? Yeah, south. And then I just was like, right. I felt I was in a position for a title shot, and I don't know what happened with that. I, that felt like, you know, I don't know if the contract was up or something, you know. And, um, you know, I got caught up in a lot of uh, contract stuff in my career, which, you know, I think I handled it well, but, you know, it, it – it definitely played a part in, um, you know, um, stagnating a couple moves I made in my career, right, whereas they didn't go the right way. And I was stuck on a certain decision, you know, good or bad. I, I don't really hold it on, hold it on myself, but I just feel like my career played out how it played out. And I'm very content how it did. But, you know, I could have made some other moves if I, if looking back, you know, but it, you know, we're here now. It's all good. But you handling all your own business then? Or did you have a management? No, no, no. I had managers at the time. I had, I went through managers. I fired some, um, you know, and I got some good ones, you know, that, that were all right. But I went some, some ones that I had to change guys. You know, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, you know, I, I tell guys now, they ask me my opinion. What do you, what should you say to young fighters? I say, get a good team behind you. Yeah. 
get people that really genuinely care about you, your career and your health and everything on that note and not trying to push you too early just to make a paycheck. Yeah. So just definitely have good people around you. Good advice, mate. Well said. Uh, Bellator, welterweight tournament, that's where we see you next. And, um, Woo! Whoa, man. One of watch? the hardest things I've done in my life, that <laughs> tournament. <laughs> Tell me. Talk to me. Because uh, 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 timing-wise, for in between the fights, I mean, the second fight, after the second fight, the semifinals, I had a concussion and broken nose. And, I, was, and I only had, I think, four weeks till the finals. And I was like, can you please? I was called the president. Uh, Bjorn at the time I'm like Bjorn can you please give me uh, at least another two more weeks um because I you know I have a broken nose and concussion dude I'm I'm twisted right now I can't even spar mm. and um I get it business wise of what you know they were on schedule I think they were with MTV at the time MTV two or something and they had that date scheduled they're like listen if you can't fight you're injured we got to put the guy in that you just beat <laughs> Jesus. And I was like, hell no, that's the money fight. So I did what I had to do, man. I didn't even spar leading up until the final fight with Han. Oh, I God. just did drills, like the the Holland boss route and all those drills, like, you know, <laughs> and a lot of strategy. I brought in Kyle oh, Parisian because, uh, you know, Rick Han was a great uh, judo guy. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, he yeah. Uchi Marino and guys on mm -hmm. the head. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Trips and all that. So I brought Kyle in and it was great. I went in and I, I I was shaky, like, you know, even before I went in the cage. I, I was feeling like a little bit of like I was underwater. Oh, and I couldn't even spar because of my nose. So I go in. That first jab, I got hit with something. And the, the bells, I heard the bells going off. But other than that, I felt super sharp. I felt like I was on so sharp that fight. I mean, even going in with all the injuries already. But I still felt great. I still, they were, I, hands down, I thought I won the fight. And I thought I outstruck him and everything it went to a split decision but, right i want to say i'm trying to remember back. yes yeah. i think it was split yeah yeah and but, ben, uh, ben asking man no joke because a grappler that's, that's yeah solid. he's he's you know that was uh you know again uh i thought i won that fight as well but um the thing that why i left again like i said earlier that there was a few things in my career i feel like i was just you know what i'm a knucklehead and i felt like <laughs> I, this one i felt i still feel like i, I made the right decision after that fight, I said, I talked to the president again. I was like, you know what? I think I won that fight. I really think I just want an immediate rematch. Whatever happened, happened. Mm -hmm. And what they wanted, they at the time, they just said, no, to, for you to get the title shot again, I have to go through the tournament again. Dude, there was that's, no that's way in hell. Ridiculous. There was no way in hell I was going through a tournament again. And, and, and no way for for that money at the time yeah i, I think it's, no, it's fair to say it. you earned your stripes by going through the tournament and then not pulling out you know when yeah. when really let's be honest medically you probably shouldn't have been clear to fight that's ridiculous so yeah. they wanted you to go through the yeah. whole thing again no way man yeah so yeah. so i sat for a year you know trying to get out my contract mm -hmm. and um, that's when i went back to ufc okay. and they got me you know for that contract going back to ufc that was you know, they, they really knew I wanted to get back there and they knew I was sitting mm -hmm. and they just, they signed me for nothing. And I took it, you know, as right. a fighter, you know, sometimes you got to gamble on yourself. Yes. Sometimes the gamble uh -huh. pays. Not in this case for me, it didn't. They put me in, you know, even Joe Silva was still with them matchmaking at the time. And he told me, he's like, all right, Jay, you have a name. I'm not bringing you in, you know, to build you up. You're already built up. I'm mm -hmm. bringing you in to fight the top guys. My first fight back was Ellenberger. Oh, yeah. Close fight. I thought I won that too, yeah. but, you know. Um, and then Woodley, you know, which is, he's the champ right now, which, um, you know, again, uh, got me in the first round. Were you, um, not, but, were you not scheduled to fight uh, Eric Silver or something? I see the member. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, he got right. hurt. Right, He got right. hurt. Yeah. But he still, at the time, he was hot at the time. Oh, you yeah, know, He yeah. was coming off of some good wins, knockouts. He's golden boy, Brazil, was, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, was, I, was, I was excited to fight him. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, anybody with a name I would have fought. I mean, yeah. again, the only thing, if I could change, would be the money. You know, I got him for a shit contract. But I wanted to fight the best guys. I mean, you you know, the the biggest test, you get the highest reward, you know, sure. the, biggest, yeah. the biggest risk. So that's what I wanted. I mean, I was at a point where I was like, that's fine. You mm -hmm. know, let me, I'm going to take this contract and bank on myself and, um, and, you know, I felt like I could win all those fights and be in a 
being a um, spot to get a title shot. But, you know, again, it, it wasn't in the cards. And um, after the last fight with Woodley, I was, you know, I sat down and I, um, you know, definitely the money played a, played a factor, but I was still content. I, I was still um, had a positive outlook on my, on my career. I mean, it changed my life from mm -hmm. a, from to a, from a negative to a positive at the time I started competing. I traveled the world. I met a lot of great friends that I'm still friends with and it opened my door to what I do now. So, yeah. I mean, I didn't know I was going to make a career out of what I'm doing now, but still, it was still at the time I felt, I felt, uh, content. Yeah. And I always said that they asked me, Hey Jay, how long you got, how long are you going to fight? So I was like, until I don't, until I feel it, I go by yeah. a lot of things, how I feel. Yeah. And when I don't have that fire to compete, then that's when it's time to retire. So I, that's, yeah. that's it. That, that's probably the best Great. way to do it, man. I hear a lot of guys talking, like, hey, when we do the MMA interviews in the podcast, like, it is, that's a great way to put it. It's about feel. You know, when when do you want to stop this? You can't put a number on it. You can't, whatever. It's just, yeah, if yeah. you're feeling it, you're feeling it. If you're not, you're not. Yeah. That's just how it goes. Because as you see it, with boxing or even MMA, some guys hold on too long. Mm -hmm. That's what we love about this sport. It's so real, man. There's nothing realer than two guys getting in a cage or a ring and, and throwing down and fighting, mm -hmm. you know? just grit i mean and the sport is so real that it shows you when you're the baddest dude in the world mm -hmm. and it shows you also when you just you were the baddest dude in the world and now you're old overnight <laughs> i mean it's yeah. it's, it's unforgiven yeah i mean <laughs> the highest highs the lowest lows right that's mother nature so man she's such a bitch you gotta, <laughs> you gotta respect and appreciate that yeah you know? absolutely my friend um you mentioned tyron woodley there that was obviously a tough night at the office you felt his power he has some doubters i don't know why but jay i put it to you as tyron woodley he's the champ is he the real deal What's that? Sorry. Tyron Woodley. A lot of people seem yeah. to be, they seem to be doubters. I don't know why people online, but you've shared the cage with him. Would you say he's, yeah, he's, he's all that? Yeah, he's the best. He's, yeah. he's the best in the world. Yeah. He has power. I mean, he has wrestling. I mean, you know, he, he was, he was uh, even at the time of me, my fight him, I knew he was, he was uh, uh, one of the best. You know, that's why I wanted to fight him. Sure. I wanted to fight undefeated guys. I wanted to fight the best in the world. And I felt, you know, I was when that that matchup had changed to him. I was like, great. Yeah, you know, yeah, like I never joke. turned down a fight with a, a, you know, with a name. You know, I always wanted to fight the best guys. Fair play, man. Um, Let's talk present now. Present day equalizer too. I just came out this weekend here in the UK. If you want to check it out, um, yeah, my man here, Jay, he's uh, he's in the car. You're trying to stab Denzel. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm fighting Denzel. <laughs> how crazy, did you how did you get involved in all this? Was this uh, just something that fell in your lap? Something you pursued, or yeah, reason, that kind of thing? Absolutely, definitely something fell in my lap. Right. I mean, again, I started training with Randy Couture, and we he put a team together in 06 and asked me if I wanted to be on it. He was opening a gym at the time and he brought me on and I, you know, and, um, he was acting at the time around, well, that was 05, 06. He was acting at the time and, um, um, you know, he was doing his thing and he kind of turned me on to that and introduced me to a few people and I did it on the side, you know, I, I, they, they, I was playing fighters and when I wasn't fighting or, you know, in fight camp, I, you know, get calls and I would do them, but I wasn't really like, Oh, I could make a career out of it. I was just doing it for fun. And, mm -hmm. and it kind of, it over time, it kind of gained like a little passion. I was like, Oh, you know, there's an art to this. I got to yeah, learn how to yeah. film fight. Um, acting is not natural for me. So I had to, I still to this day take classes and, you know, do workshops and stuff That's like that. Cool, because man. Yeah, it was not natural to me. So yeah. I really had to put work into like martial arts. I have a mm -hmm. martial arts mind frame for uh for the film business for yes. sure. For film fighting, for acting, for everything involved in it. It's so much time and work and you know, there's so much things that you have to learn. So I kinda have that mind frame on it. And um I did it on the side and then after the Woodley fight, I you know, I Again, I sat down and I was like, all right, what, you know, maybe I could make a, a run for this. Let me see. I had a bunch of network built up in it and I did a few things already. And, and I said, let me try it full time. And that's when I, you know, just dived in and, um, yeah, 
And now I'm in the back of a car trying to kill them to wash Long story short. That's brilliant, man. Did you, did you fancy doing, because uh, I spoke to Eric Paulson recently and he, he did stunt work for years. Did, did stunt, yeah. being a stunt man, that kind of stuff, that tickle your fancy? Yeah, it's cool. I mean, you know, again, if, if uh, a lot of stuff I get, of course, I'm, you know, I'm a fight guy. True. So, and I, and I can act. So I do a lot of parts with acting and fighting and I, and I do a lot of stuff where I do my own stunts, yeah. like, especially fight scenes. Um, but you know, if there's, you know, some specific, specific, they'll be bringing, um, a specialist in that field, whether mm-hmm. it's a, you know, a hundred foot high fall or fire burns or, a car turning over, you know, they bring in a, a professional yeah. uh, car driver or, or Olympic style diver, or, you know, if there's a fight scene, they call Jay Heron. That's awesome, <laughs> man. That's brilliant. Super. <laughs> Jay, final part yeah. of our show is answering some fan questions and, and a lot of listeners are really excited to hear you're coming on. So are you okay to hang around and answer some of the martial arts chat podcast sure. questions? Absolutely. Mate? Excited. Um, we'll go to Facebook for some of them. Uh, let's see. Anthony Wind, or is it Wind? I'm not sure. Thanks for getting in touch, mate. He says, what happened in the Lap- Lapsley fight? I never saw him tap, but I sure saw him go out. He says he never watched the story, Jay. Loved your fights, man. Um, the Lapsley fight. Oh, that was Bellator. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't. I think he went out a little bit, so they stopped it. I, don't, I mean, it's kind of a long time ago, but... Um, yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure. Maybe the ref saw something I didn't see, but I th- I think he he was out. He wasn't responding. That's what it was. I don't think he was responding. The ref was talking to him. Are you okay? Are you okay? And um, you know, if you don't respond to move, you know, they uh, they you know they stop it. Definitely. So I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Fair enough. Alan Payne says, Extreme Couture seems like a crazy place, man. You must have some crazy stories from there. And do you still train there? Absolutely. That's home base. I always train there. Um, yeah, it's a great gym. We've had everybody, every name you could ever think of come through at that gym and train there at one time. Um, yeah, a lot of crazy stories, but fun, fun stories as well. And, um, you know, guys, it's, it's a gym, it's a real gym. So guys definitely go hard and, um, yeah, if you have in Vegas, come, come check it out. There you go, man. That's it. Uh, good friend of the show, Don Wilson, is asking, who is a better actor, you or the pit bull Arlovsky? So Arlovsky's in the Equalizer as well, is that right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah Arlovsky's in there too. Uh, um, yeah, he's in the uh, right in the beginning scene. He, oh, he does his thing. Yeah, you can't miss him. <laughs> his fight of the mug with his broken nose twisted in it. He looks real mean. Perfect. He's a perfect um, guy. To cast. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I work hard. I'm not trying to compete with anybody, but just trying to get better, man. Um, Alofsky, you know, I'm I'm happy for him, too. He's doing his thing, man. He's still fighting, yeah. which is incredible because he's like, you know, I'm we're from the same era. And, um, you know, he's. I guess he does his thing in um, film business too, which is great. I love seeing that with all the guys that are, you know, fighters and have something else to, you know, an, another avenue to go down as well. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, this girl, Charlotte Russell, has got in touch. She says she was at one of your fights. Hold on, I'll just find the mates, by the way. Uh, oh, sorry, he's here. It's a shame we never got to see you and Diaz go at it in strike force. I was there in Sunrise when you beat Joe Riggs, Diaz, Keod, Zaromskis, Robbie Lawler with a mofo of a comeback against Manu. That's right, I remember yeah. that. Uh, Herschel Walker too. Missed those days. Oh, thanks for getting in touch. Yeah, that was that was a cool card. Yeah, I mean that would have been a fun fight, Diaz, but unfortunately. That's a long time ago in the past. I'm fully, happily retired. <laughs> we might get a fight on camera, though. You never know. We could do a, a, a movie together. You never yeah, know. Man. It could happen. Herschel Walker, what was the story there? Is he, is he from American football or something? Was that, was that yeah, he was an NFL player. And right. was, I mean, I think back then he was like 55 years old or something, too. Oh, for so, real? And he in phenomenal shape at that yeah, being that man. age. Phenomenal. Phenomenal shape. It's incredible. I, mean, he, I heard he, he does. I heard he does like a thousand push-ups a day or something. <laughs> Fucking one of those guys. I see. Was he like a big deal in in the NFL before he before he did MMA? Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Okay. He was a big big time NFL player back in the day. I mean, right. he retired years ago too. Wow. So I, just him trying to come fighting at that point was was incredible. 
That's amazing, man. Yeah, it looked good. I, from what I can remember, man, those those uh, those scraps were good. Um, we've got one coming in from Twitter uh, at Els for Elf who asks you, "How would Denzel do in a real fight?" <laughs> uh, um, actually, he's been boxing for thirty years, so he knows how to move. And um, yeah, he did. He did. He did all all the fight scene too. So I was really uh, impressed with him. You know, he knows how to move. He knows his characters, which is is incredible. He brought my level up in the scene because he's just that good of an actor. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, he's uh, he's he's he knows he knows he knows his stuff, man. He's he trains. He was bo- he's been boxing for thirty years. I know he did that movie. Yeah. What was yeah, the one? Since... Uh, the Hurricane. But what, so was it? Yeah, no, no. Before that, wow. he started. I guess he. Uh, when he did a uh, Crimson Tide with uh, Gene Hackman, <laughs> Gene Hackman yeah, he right. had a scene, I guess the opening scene of the movie, he's hitting the bag, uh, and he said, "Man, I have to learn." Like, I, he said, "I, I have to learn how to, you know, hit the bag right," because he felt like he wasn't doing it right. Uh-huh. Which, when you feel, when you think that, you definitely right because you need, you know, it takes some type of skill. Yes. So he said he joined the gym back then, a boxing gym, and he's still with the same trainer for thirty years. That's amazing, man! What a story! Yeah, That's amazing. <laughs> Super, mate. Really. Jay, uh, Jay Ron, a massive thank you for your time, sir. I just want to give you one more bit of business, just to offer you the floor here. If you want to shout out any sponsors, associates, families, friends, gyms, uh, whatever you want, well, mate. Just- yeah, man, check me out on, um, you can check all my updates. I post them on Twitter, uh, at Jay Haran, my name, J-A-Y-H-I-E-R-O-N. Uh, my Instagram, Jay Haran, Facebook, the same. And, um, yeah, it just dropped, I guess, in um, the UK this weekend or last weekend, the Equalizer 2. Nice. When did it come out? Uh, just Saturday, so only just yesterday, yeah. Oh, man, this weekend, yeah, man. go it's see that. Fresh. Everybody's going to love it. It's a great movie. It opened number one in um in the states when it when it um when the weekend it came out so pretty cool. <laughs> pretty Look forward cool. to it, mate. Thank you so much for your time, brother. All the best with uh, everything you're doing in the future, and we'll catch up again soon. Mate. Thank you, bro. Thanks. Bye bye.